and the passengers so during four months uh, uh, after the coup, the virus was, uh, was number one, uh, was uh, more excess, more or less uh, spontaneous, and secondly, uh, uh, the uh, armed groups uh, emerged at that time uh, were uh, poorly organized and uh, uh, um, After that, uh, some remaining members of, of the guidance bureau started to reconsider how can we renew the leadership, how can we fill the vacuum, how can we renew our legitimacy as leaders of organization. Uh, that's why um, some sort of internal uh, elections uh, took place in, in January 2014, um, and uh, the new uh, bureau uh, was elected, and it was called the Higher Administrative Committee. Um, this, uh, this committee was seen by uh, the members of the committee themselves as the replacement for that bureau. But for uh, the, the uh, Supreme, uh, um, for Deputy Supreme Leader Mahmoud Azad and other senior leaders, they saw um, this committee as um, uh, a crisis management uh, office. It was not a placement for the leadership of the organization uh, itself, but it was just uh, an, an, uh, an office established to deal with the, with the crisis of the military coup. And this disagreement actually um, had a very major consequence. And a major consequence, a consequence of the other one. Um, the first question uh, is uh, this, this electric group, how should we uh, continue our, uh, our struggle against the military coup? The uh, emphasis strategy of most important factor of the military coup uh, was to replicate the vision, to replicate general militia and uh, the groups who were uh, uh, seen. This has a massive uh, focus and demonstration. This project organized uh, 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 extensive set and gap there. Then the, the military will, uh, will, uh, will be forced to, uh, to compromise and to take some steps back. But after the election of this uh, committee, by the time this committee was selected, it was clear that this strategy uh, didn't, didn't matter. And uh, the level of uh, uh, radicalization within the Muslim Brotherhood phase and even within the uh, circle of supporters of Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, was hard. And then the pressure came in, I heard that from many leaders uh, of Muslim Brotherhood at that time, that in their meetings with uh, rank and file and the members of the organization, they were even refused to, uh, to continue by the same structure. We can go and ask people to join our, join our demonstration while there is no protection, while that we are uh, an easy target for the uh, police forces and, and for the facts. So, the, first, the, the committee started to do some sort of structural remodeling and start to mobilize its resources uh, toward the resistance action or toward the, the uh, 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 revolution mobilization against the military group. Um, so first, uh, many IOS members uh, were uh, promoted to fill the vacuum in, in, uh, of leadership and the, the, some sort of revolutionary mobilization committees were, were formed at that time. Even the activities of um, the Level of the Charity uh, Committee uh, was really uh, reshaped to be the committee of uh, those who are affected or the army. Level and the those who were affected by the military uh, coup, uh, the family of the people who were killed or, uh, or arrested. And most importantly, the idea that uh, within the preaching committee or level, level martial art, uh, the, the research unit within this committee uh, was assigned a very important task to prepare a document for uh, legal justification and uh, religious guidelines for revolution in action. And the Sharia Commission of the Muslim Brotherhood Scholars for the Hek Sharia and Armenian Funds Committee, they produced very interesting and a very important document titled uh, the Jurisprudence of Popular Resistance against the Coup about early 2015. And this uh, uh, it means that it took the Muslim Sharia in the And in this document, for the first time, we can see that uh, just, uh, religious justification and uh, jurisprudential justification of uh, using non-violent means against uh, against the coup. As I said, in the first phase, uh, officially the organization uh, rejected any uh, the use of any non-violent means. And the Supreme Leader like Muhammad uh, Radia repeatedly uh, said that our our revolution should uh, remain uh, peaceful. And um, they even within the organization itself, many leaders emphasized the using this means. 
But um, I believe the operating support networks are most relevant and their supporters that uh, they use the balance uh, either to protect and defend uh, the, the demonstration or even to uh, the attack from police forces, uh, police stations or uh, police uh, vehicles at that level. But then, in this stage now, we are seeing that the radicalization process reaching the organization itself and leadership of Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, itself. So they have to adopt uh, organizationally and officially uh, uh, using non government uh, using violent means, uh, although they give it a very interesting name, innovative non violence which means that they will lose some uh, violent means, but they will not be too violent. And this woman that was uh, famous at that time, that any, any, anything less than killing is uh, still uh, uh, non-violent, or now we have a in here, it's still peaceful. Uh, and of course, after that also, uh, this, uh, uh, the young uh, that Saif mentioned before, uh, the qualitative action committee is being reported, and they were trained to do some sort of uh, violent attacks. Um, this was under this famous uh, plan that was set at that time. Uh, we, uh, it was, uh, it was named the expansion and conclusion plan, the hundred and ten of the bed, which had three phases uh, starting with exhaustion and conclusion, and then a shell, frustration, and then a half um, So uh, it was, uh, the name of the plan was uh, exhaustion and conclusion, uh, with uh, exhaustion with this portion. Let's, let's confuse the, uh, the administration of the new uh, administration or the new uh, regime issue. Then the regime has to do some sort of compromise and then we will uh, end up uh, uh, generating the um, And the number of the political action to keep and think they were free to do some sort of uh, violence, like how to attack a police station or even uh, to um, uh, to, to set fire in the streets or uh, target some like uh, cell phone towers or, or other, other infrastructure facilities uh, just to uh, shock the, the, the regime, to uh, force the regime to uh, um, uh, to uh, initiate or, or, or to take some steps back. However, um, it's important also to see, as I said, all the time we need to see the radicalization of the station within the organization itself, and at the same time we need to keep another power on radicalization within the, uh, the broader uh, Islamic uh, trend in Egypt. And uh, uh, if the intention of the Muslim Brotherhood leaders uh, at that time just to do some sort of uh, exhaustion and uh, to, uh, to keep the violence relocating, uh, but actually what happened? Uh, even from uh, some members of the qualitative uh, uh, action committees or from some uh, organizations that were not uh, properly affiliated with Muslim Brotherhood, but they were uh, um, uh, even, even, uh, even at the personal level, they were interacting with members and with some leaders, some local leaders of Muslim Brotherhood, they exceeded the, this idea of uh, keeping our members in 4K. The idea of creative uh, actions and taking the cost from, from uh, some soldiers and some officers who were uh, involved in um, uh, torture or rape uh, or, or uh, killing uh, some, uh, some members of Muslim Brotherhood, this idea became famous and uh, many uh, other organizations emerged during you know, this but the, the second generation of the army, uh, for the army groups, were more organized and uh, forced uh, heavily. Uh, 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 all of them in comparison to the previous generation of like Harkin, uh, uh, not only the Harkin, but the other, other uh, poorly uh, organized movements. So in this case, we can see uh, uh, movements like the Harkin Selby or the Evolution Punishment, the uh, Popular Resistance Movement for uh, uh, the Harkin and the Harkin and the Shadi and, and so on. So in the second phase, what we can see that uh, the organization and uh, officials started to adopt and uh, violent means to achieve its goals uh, to resist the military coup. And secondly, the legalization in the circuits, uh, in the, the border of Islamic uh, trade in Egypt, uh, reached its maximum body having, like, uh, uh, organizing these small armed groups who really uh, um, went beyond the idea of doing some social and contribution to the military uh, by actually assimilating uh, uh, and taking revenge. Uh, from, uh, from uh, some of these officers uh, uh, at that time. Um, the plan of the exhaustion and confusion actually they uh, decided 
and actually use non rights uh, uh, as opposed to the idea of creating non rights and not involving religious leadership. And I then later on, I did that in the because also something important, too, I will know also, something important happened uh, that was called the Legacy of Iraq War for Egypt, uh, years ago, uh, in which more than 150 uh, uh, schoolers uh, from, the, from um, um, more than 70 countries in the region, they issued a uh, declaration that supported the idea of resisting uh, COVID in Egypt using uh, violent, uh, violent means. Um, and then at the end, uh, by, as I said, by May 2016, the legalization process and came to an end and uh, the dealer uh, the was started at that time by the um, um, resignation of Muhammad uh, Kamal himself and then the, uh, the uh, main uh, offices uh, established by the previous leadership of the higher associated team was the soul. Just to about two things here are important. First, that the civil leaders were skillful and they used the many powers, different tools to regain control and to regain leadership of the organization using financial cards, uh, uh, using their uh, moral uh, uh, authority and their prestige, their organization to marginalize and to uh, remove the uh, radical uh, faction uh, from the leadership of Muslim people. The, 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 uh, the, um, the other uh, radicalized units, uh, they even uh, dissolved under the pressure from the security, uh, security uh, forces. They either killed, arrested, or fled out of the country. And then some of them first involved in the establishment of other armed groups like Hassan and Jurel Thawra. And some of them even individually joined ISIS, either uh, in Egypt or in prison or even abroad. Just to move here, we have the uh, rapidly moved to the important points uh, in this interesting uh, cycle of radicalization and deradicalization. First, that uh, the radical transformation then was involved was partial. No one was talking about taking uh, uh, arms and uh, go uh, into an open confrontation with the military uh, leadership. Uh, and now it was just uh, the conflict or the dispute was about using some violent means or uh, uh, strict to non violent means. It was just then because it was rapidly reversed by the civil universe. And second and thirdly, it was a bottom up process because uh, upgrading and promoting some of those leaders to fill the leadership uh, position in the organization, this led to uh, uh, transferring this radical uh, transformation from the base or from the periphery to the center of the organization. Uh, understanding this dynamic, we need to uh, deploy many approaches, and it's not only the idea of uh, approaching mobilization for repression rebellion hypothesis, we need to include different factors, including the idea of rational choice, the calculation of cost benefit of this radical transformation, or the idea of political opportunity. Um, the new radical leaders of Muslim Brotherhood at that time, they had this feeling of nothing to lose. We need to go to, into open confrontation, even if this confrontation uh, led to the, uh, the, uh, the solution of the whole organization in Egypt. But the civil leaders had this idea that we still have an opportunity, we still have a chance for reintegration in, in, in the political regime if there is a chance, so let's minimize the damage, let's uh, reorder the organization and keep it dormant for a while and waiting for any chance. And at the end, we need also to uh, use some Asian-centric uh, Asian accounts, the, 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 uh, the, uh, because uh, during the time of crisis, the strength and the uh, uh, strength of organization and the maintenance of uh, 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 organizational culture is decreased and then um, the personal, um, the personal choice is important because now the organization no longer um, has the same capacity to maintain the culture and to maintain its, its um, doctrine within its members. So then the Asian centric accounts, the, the personal calculation and the personal uh, previous experiences and even the personal skills are important in being decision at that time. So the second point is the uh, point, uh, uh, the concluding remark that we need to and uh, the goal in many uh, theoretical approaches to understand this uh, dynamic of radicalization and deradicalization. Finally, um, this goal of radicalization, I'm going to... Um, okay, don't go one sentence. I'm sorry. 
uh, little bit of radicalization in the spiral debate on trade and how trade was important. Is it a gateway organization to uh, violence and extremists, or is it defense against militant customs? And uh, this debate actually is more or less going to require a political determination and political position against Muslim brothers. I'm so sorry that I had to uh, like finish the debate that we will tell in this interesting cycle of the political but um, I leave it here and thank you.